Debug.log is not the only way to debug your code. Clicking this play button whilst your game is running will allow you to pause the execution by placing breakpoints in Visual Studio. This can be extremely useful to help figure out why the if things are not working as you expect them to. Say for example, at the start of the game I want to move my character to the middle of my scene. I might write some code in the game manager to reset the player's position. Where the game manager is just an empty object which, you guessed it, will use to manage the game. All seems good, the code builds, there are no errors, but when I hit play, shock and horror, nothing works. I suppose the error in this case is pretty self-explanatory. In the game manager, nothing has been assigned to the player variable. But let's say, for argument's sake, I cannot for the life of me figure out what the heck this error is. I can place a breakpoint in my code by clicking here, or by selecting the line I want to break on and hitting F9. Then, by clicking attach to Unity, and starting my game, Visual Studio will pause the code execution at the breakpoint. We'll know the breakpoint's been hit as Visual Studio will highlight it in yellow and the attach button will now say continue. Once the code is broken, we can hover over any variable to see their current value. Hovering over the player variable in this example reveals that its value is null, which is why nothing is working. Obviously, dragging the player game object into the game manager will resolve this issue and now everything works as expected. Okay, so let's make things a little more complicated by adding a player script with a function that resets its position. Again, we'll call the function in the game manager at the start of the game. Hmm, that's not right, is it? So again, let's place a breakpoint at the start, attach to Unity and start the game. This time, we'll add a watch to the player's position. A watch does exactly that. It watches all the values in a variable that we specify. Clicking debug, window, watch, gives us this little window and by clicking add item to watch we can now see into the variable we select by simply typing in its name. Okay cool, so we're watching our player variable. If we hit F5 or press continue, the program will execute all the way to the end. But in this case we want to step through the code line by line. We can do so by hitting F10 or clicking the step over button. Once we step over this line, we see that the player variable in our watch window is no longer null. We can now expand it out to see all the details within it. In this case, we're interested in the transform so that we can see why the position is on crack. There's so much stuff in here, so let's add a more specific watch. One that looks at the transform's position so that we know exactly when it goes out of whack. We expect it to change to 0, 0, 0,5, 0 after the reset position function. But looking at the watch, we notice that it's not correct. At this point, we can drag the execution back up to see why exactly it's not calculating correctly. We can do this by clicking the yellow arrow and dragging it up to the line we want to execute from. But this time we can hit F11 or click the step into button to see exactly what's happening in the reset function. And ah damn and blast we now see that a coding boo boo has snuck its way into the code. We'll quickly remove that piece of crap and there we go everything's working as expected. I hope you enjoyed this quick introduction to debugging. I will be doing more videos on more advanced debugging techniques, there are tons of them. I think debugging is one of the most important skills to have as a developer. So I'll keep posting as much hopefully useful and entertaining content as I can. So like this video, subscribe and I'll catch you on the next one.